Wherever you're standing in this equinox, we're going to ask you to bring your conversations down to an end, please. If somebody around you is still talking, please tap them on the shoulder and let them know to bring it on down. And we're going to keep all pedal stop, all conversations, complete silence, please. As we bring our next speaker up to the stage, thank you so much. Thank you. We saw a video before of some of the heroes at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center talking about where the money from Cycle for Survival goes and saying thank you. And it is my privilege to bring to the stage from Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center, ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Jason Connor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Really, really. Um, it is really exciting to be here. Um, this is actually the fifth state that I've been to a uh, for survival ride in. It's my first time in, in my home state of New Jersey. Uh, I, I moved out here uh, a little over three years ago when Sloan Kettering opened at uh, one of our regional sites in, in Monmouth County. And, and I'm a gynecologic medical oncologist, which is sort of a rare specialty for medical oncologists who, who specialize in treatment of gynecologic cancers. It didn't take long after moving here when I realized I was the only medical oncologist in the state of New Jersey who limits his practice to gynecologic cancers. So I'm not, not only a, a doctor of rare cancers, but I'm a rare doctor, I guess, in that sense. Um, like many of my colleagues at Sloan Kettering, I was inspired into oncology by, by personal experiences and personal uh, loss when I was growing up, like I'm sure many of you, of course, have experienced and been inspired by as well. And I think those lessons uh, taught me uh, very uh, deeply the importance of every patient, of every life. And uh, I think that's what this event is really about. It's about treating rare cancers that might otherwise be overlooked. They might not have the statistics behind them, but every patient's cancer matters because every patient matters. I think that's the message here. When I look at my practice over the last, I've been doing this since 2004, and things have changed dramatically. And I remember, I'd say, during the first half of that period of time, very often, I would say to my patients, they would, they would come in and they'd say, hey, I heard about this, this new drug in the paper. Is this going to work for me? And I'd say, well, you know, unfortunately, that's, that's in trials for the more common cancers, and, and we just don't have the data yet for your cancers. And I realized recently, I haven't been having that discussion lately. And the discussion I've been having with patients is that we now have the ability to look at your tumor and find out exactly what happened to your cells to make them behave badly and become cancer. And with this information, I've been able to find treatments and approaches for individuals with cancers that never otherwise would have happened. Um, and this is really in large part due to the, the comprehensive genomic analyses, the DNA testing that we do through MSK Impact. Um, which is directly funded by your spinning legs. Uh, you guys are the motor of this, uh, and many other things, but I think that when I think about um, what's going on, I think about just this week and these last couple of days, the impact that um, Cycle for Survival has had on my day-to-day -day work is extraordinary. We think about uh, funding research through Cycle for Survival, which we do directly, every dollar goes directly to research. But it's some kind of research and patient care go hand in hand and feed off each other, and they're two sides of the same coin. And when I look at um, just yesterday, I saw a patient with a, with a rare endometrial stromal sarcoma, and I sent this patient for MSK impact sequencing, and it turns out that, that her tumor has the genomics of another rare cancer called a pecoma, uh, which was studied also at Sloan Kettering a few years back, and I said, okay, well, how do we treat Picoma, and can we do this for endometrial stromal sarcoma? And I, over several months, emailed a ton of people and spoke to all the experts, and everybody agreed this has never been discovered before or done before. 
um, but we did it. And she had an unbelievable response. Uh, and this is not part of a clinical trial. This is not something that necessarily is going to be, uh, well, hopefully it will be published at some point. Um, but we'll, we'll see. But these are things that are happening on a day-to-day -day basis. Another patient I saw just, just yesterday is a young woman with a small cell carcinoma of the ovary hypercalcemic type. So we're, we're, we're moving from the days where we called everything ovarian cancer, and we treated every ovarian cancer the same way, and now we, we look at this patient, I sequenced her tumor, we found a mutation, and we said, you know, there's actually a drug for this mutation. And we, we opened up a clinical protocol called an SPU, a single patient use protocol for this patient. And we're giving her this, this medicine, it's an easy H2 inhibitor, I'm happy to talk about this, but she's having a great response. And I've never seen her look better than she did yesterday. And another patient I saw yesterday <laughs> has a low-grade serous ovarian cancer, and, and she turns out to have a mutation in, in BRAF called B600E. And it turns out there's a drug for that. And um, this patient has had an unbelievable response for about a year on this, on this pill and is doing great. And, and these things, you know, are day-to-day -day clinical operations. I'm in the, I'm in the trenches. Uh, I'm one of the busiest doctors in the hospital, and um, my practice has been less academic and more uh, clinical-based uh, in the last few years here in Jersey because it's so needed. But I can tell you that uh, what is happening in the research side is having an immediate effect on what we do day to day. And it's having a profound effect on patients' lives. And a profound benefit for everybody who loves those patients and who that patient loves. And it's an incredible thing to witness. And um, I'm, I'm thrilled to be able to do this now because our practice has changed. Nonetheless, there is much, much more work to be done. Um, the number of rare cancers out there is extraordinary. About uh, half of all cancers are rare cancers. And the uniqueness of those uh, is, uh, the more we understand, uh, the more unique we find these individual cancers. And cancer is not just one disease, it is hundreds and hundreds of diseases, and each individual person's cancer is as unique as themselves. And patients often ask me, hey doc, have you, have you seen this before? And my answer is always yes, and it's always no. Because it's sort of, if you, need, if you meet a new, a new person at a party, and you've never met them before and say, have you met me before? The answer is always no, but I don't know what people are like. And just like people, cancers are all unique and different. Um, and being able to study them and understand them and treat them and make people's lives better and longer and give people hope is really um, at the core of what we're doing here, and it really matters. So um, I can't thank you all enough. I can't thank Equinox enough for uh, their incredible support for, for many, many years. Now. This is really one of the great events of the year for us to come out here and see how many people care and are contributing and helping because we need you. Because the things that you are supporting through Cycle for Survival wouldn't happen otherwise. I think that's really important to understand that neither um, government funding nor uh, pharmaceutical funding will go to the cancers that are being supported by Cycle for Survival. So you're having a real meaningful impact and you're making things happen that otherwise would not happen. So you should all feel very excited about that, and we are very grateful. Dr. Conner, he said that the amount of rare cancers is extraordinary, but what he forgot to mention is how extraordinary all the heroes are at Memorial Sloan Veteran Cancer Center. Can we make some noise for them?
Wait, I don't get a ten. Countdown? Where's my countdown? You don't need a countdown, Frank. I know, but I was planning on a countdown to go into the first song. Let's count it! 